The president's victory in the battleground state of Ohio clinched the race and gave him the 270 electoral votes necessary to win re-election. If I move across. Overall, though, as the map shows, that the United States remains deeply divided. The president won the electoral college vote by a wide margin, but he only beat the governor by about two percentage points in the popular vote. The map is divided... Frank Sesno is the director of the School of Media and Public Affairs at Georgetown, just sorry, George Washington University. He joins me now. Um, apologies, wrong institution, <laughs> right man. Um, That's all right. <laughs> but uh, Frank, you, you, you are, I, I choose my words carefully here, a scholar of these election nights and the, uh, the machinations of the US political and electoral system. Last night, did we see a fundamental shift which will have long-term repercussions, or did we just see a bad Republican candidate lose? Oh, it's, uh, I hate to be complicated about this, but it's somewhere in between. Uh, no, we did not see a fundamental shift. If you'd seen a fundamental shift, you wouldn't have the president winning by a, a squeaker of a popular vote. Uh, but you did see a, you know, a, a, a substantial margin of victory in the Electoral College, which is this weird American system which somehow has been working for all of these years. But it really, in some ways, diminishes a lot of the country because the election was all about these hand, this handful of swing states you talked about. The, the Republican candidate... Um, probably a, a lackluster campaign too late, uh, allowed himself to get painted over the summer by a barrage of very expensive uh, uh, campaign advertising by Barack Obama, uh, painting him as a, as a guy who's going to export okay. jobs. But no fundamental realignment, Richard. Well, -uh. you, say, you say that, except if you look at the fact that the, the Democrats and the, uh, Barack Obama did build this coalition... Minorities, women, African Americans, uh, the gay vote, the Latino vote. Does it not make it more difficult for the Republicans in the future? And oh. do they not? Because if you, you know, let's take those states out west: Nevada, Colorado. Um, do they not now have to have that fundamental reappraisal? Oh, the, the, what is the, the big news here, and it's been happening over time, so it's not really surprising, is but since 1992, the percentage of the white vote that turns out every presidential election uh, as a portion of the overall electorate has been dropping two, three, four percentage points every year. And so it's, we've gone from 84, 87 percent now down to about 74 percent, I believe. And so the face of the electorate is changing. Uh, the Latino vote, Hispanics in this country, hit 10 percent uh, for the first time uh, this year. And 80 percent of the minority vote right. went for Barack Obama. So the Republicans have a gigantic challenge. Do they, in 2016 and beyond, want to be the party of, okay. of white people or do they want to be party of diversity? Let, we, we, the, uh, an enormous amount will be spoken about the Republicans, but the Democrats have a challenge too. And it is this, surely, Frank. They have to do they have to govern when, frankly, half the country who voted didn't want them. I mean, you know, you may be able to electorally win the election, but half the people that's don't right. like you. That's and, right. And secondly, because of the checks and balances, you've got split government. So the Democrats have to also try and bring more on board. Yeah, welcome gridlock. It's back. It, it's alive and well. The Democrats are going to have to reach across the aisle. You heard that in Obama's speech last night. The question is, was that, you know, reaching out across the aisle a rhetorical flourish and a moment of grace and, and, and victory? Or does he really mean to be Obama 2.0 like that headline that you held up uh, suggests? If he does, he's going to need the Republicans in and across the table from him. The Republicans have already said at the leadership level, it's up to you, Barack Obama. You know, you reach out to us. So... I'm not generally optimistic, but the challenge to both parties here, if they're going to deal with the real problems on the table, will be A, to expand their ranks, B, to seriously reach across the aisle, uh, and C, to find a place in the middle where they can come to terms. We've seen it before. I covered for this network. Uh, Ronald Reagan, which was a very polarized time. People forget that. They want to wrap it in gauze. It was not. But they, they struck a lot of bargains on Social Security, on taxes, on immigration, on a whole bunch of things. So we'll see. Good to see you, Frank. I, I, I'm, I'm in awe that I'm standing in the studio and on the floors where you will have walked uh, many times over the years. <laughs> Frank Sesno, joining me Good to see you, from Richard. Washington. One thing I love about election night is the way, as the morning wears on, 
everybody's voices are just that little bit more hoarse from the night before. We'll take a break. Back in a moment. You just can't imagine another human being doing this to another human being. It's amazing to me that he lived. I felt his grief, I felt his pain, and I just wanted to do something. Losing weight in Kuwait is not that easy. So I'm a little bit overweight. See why this Gulf nation is one of the fattest in the world. Plus, meet the artist driving his work at 90 miles an hour. Join me, Zane Vergie, as we explore the state of Kuwait. Inside the Middle East, Saturday only on CNN, in association with Qatar Foundation. We're living in a world that is so connected and so interdependent. We have so many more shared experiences globally than, than we thought we had. In some way, things that are happening at the other end of the world are linked to you. Ideas have a way of traveling. They have a way of traveling across borders, across continents. So we have to care about what is taking place in other countries, in other governments. And if they're doing the wrong thing, we need to make the world sit up, pay attention and do something. Welcome back, everyone, to our continuing coverage of election 2012. President Barack Obama, in case you're just waking up to this, is there someone who's just waking up There's to this? There's one man that, besides the president and the challenger <laughs> that waits four years and studies incessantly. Final thought, John Mann. For months, we've been talking about the economy as the only issue. We've been talking about Ohio. We've been talking about the swing states. But it comes down, ultimately, to the people, to the voters. Four years ago, Barack Obama assembled a coalition of African Americans, of women, of younger voters. And that coalition endured four difficult years, an economic downturn and enormous disappointments. The question this time around was, would that coalition reform? Could it coalesce again? What we've seen over the last 24 hours is that after an incredibly bitter campaign, the coalition did coalesce. It came back finally to a vote by the people of the United States, not the ad makers, not even the candidates, the people. Ultimately, the people decided, which is really the way it's supposed to be. All right. Abs well, yeah. Oh, quickly. Yeah. Gridlock, gridlock, gridlock. In the, in the new Congress in January. Yes or no? Yes, yes, yes. All right. There we all are, Good answer. <laughs> direct answer. That's going to do it for me. Richard, you stay on with our Ali Valsh, I believe. Yes, in the Washington. market's open in half an hour <laughs> in New York. It was. So and I will see you at 1 p.m. Eastern, which is about four hours from now for the International Desk. So stay tuned, though. We continue our coverage of election 2012 right here on CNN International. Don't go anywhere.